Over the weekend, protesters showed up outside the homes of two Supreme Court justices over the recent news that Roe v. Wade is about to be overturned. So in this video, I will discuss some of those details. I will show you some video from one of the protests, including an interview from one of the people that were there, as well as some opinions online that may sway you. So first up here, details from NBC News. On Saturday, people gathered in the rain outside the home of Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh in Chevy Chase, Maryland, according to organizing group Shutdown DC. It's said on Twitter that about 100 protesters showed up outside his home and that of Chief Justice John Roberts. Shutdown DC is advertising another demonstration planned for Monday night outside Justice Samuel Alito's house, the author of the leaked draft opinion. The group said on its website that it will hold a candlelight vigil for all these rights that Alito is threatening to take away, where speakers will share testimony. So these protests so far have been peaceful. They're calling the next one a candlelight vigil. So this is not, you know, these aren't people showing up to, to threaten these uh, these justices. It's just they're out there protesting in front of their homes. And I'll show you in a second here who the leader of at least the Kavanaugh protest is, it's, and it may surprise you but first here so mcconnell is uh taking this even further saying that a national abortion ban is possible if roe v wade is overturned meaning even blue states aren't going to be an escape from this insanity now biden has come out to criticize these protests i guess you can't expect anything different from uh president biden here and let me now get to some video and then i'll get to the opinions on this There's like no other legal situation where somebody has to sacrifice their lives for somebody else without consent. Um, like even organ donors have to give their consent. So in this way, I feel like women are even getting less rights than a corpse would. All right. So you saw the protest there, peaceful, chanting, nothing crazy going on. And I think that protester makes a great point, And I've made this point before as well. You're not forced to give up your organs or give blood to save a life. Yet you should be forced to give up your entire body for nine months and ultimately your entire life for a zygote. It's a little bizarre. Look, if you're anti-abortion, then don't get an abortion. But to force your beliefs on everybody else is stupid. But anyways, let's get to first a couple of negative opinions here on these protests. So... It's mostly people in media, people that are very wealthy, are very disconnected from the impact that this will have. So Paul Begala, Democratic operative here, coming out and saying this is wrong, stupid, potentially dangerous, and politically counterproductive. John Harwood here saying it is wrong to even hint at physically threatening a public official, and that's not what's going on here. But anyways, that tends to be the opinion against us. Oh, you shouldn't do it, is the extent of their opinion. This is a bad thing to do. Okay. And look, I think it's fine to struggle with this issue. I don't think it's... Not everyone... This isn't going to be an obvious thing to do for everybody. I totally get if you are a little standoffish to this idea because you think it's wrong to protest people in positions of power that are going to destroy the lives of millions. I... <laughs> not to... I'm not trying to be flippant here. I, I understand. I get it. But let me show you some opinions that, uh, you know, may differ. First off, though, Brett Kavanaugh here, his neighbor, is the one organizing the protest outside his home. So anyone's saying, oh, but how about their neighbors? I think, if anything, that's probably the most fair argument is, oh, their neighbors didn't ask for this, but you're bothering them as well. Okay, that is going to be, you know, there's going to be some, I guess, collateral damage here, for lack of a better term. Yeah, the neighbors didn't do this, and they're being bothered by this. Okay, that's it is what it is. But understand, at least one of them <laughs> helped organize the protest in front of Kavanaugh's home, saying, I'm not going to be civil to that man. All right, now let's get to some opinions online. So Rob Rousseau here tweeting out, If you don't want anyone protesting outside your house, simply do not spend your entire life accumulating political power in order to take fundamental rights away from millions of people. I think he makes a pretty good point. 
Uh, Aliandra tweeting out here, this whole discourse about protesting at SCOTUS Justice's home is ridiculous. We celebrate the Founding Fathers ransacking British ships and dumping their contents into Boston Harbor. I'm sorry, were you under the impression that the U.S. was founded upon peaceful protest? Also, another good point. This here from Ian, protesting in front of judges' homes is the peaceful civil response. On that point, between 1977 and 2015, anti-choice extremists directed more than 7,200 reported acts of violence at abortion providers. This included 42 bombings, 185 arson attacks, and thousands of death threats, bioterrorism threats, and assaults. In addition, more than 234,300 acts of disruption were reported, including bomb threats, hate mail, and harassing calls. The rate of violence and intimidation has skyrocketed since July 2015, when an anti-choice organization, the Center for Medical Progress, released now discredited, highly edited, and incendiary videos in an attempt to smear Planned Parenthood. So, that's the other side. Bombings, arson, acts of violence, countless acts of violence here. Yet, compare this to a peaceful protest outside a house. Doesn't seem such like a a big deal now, does it? But, I don't know. Next uh, opinion here, Rebecca Traster, who is a writer, says, just thinking about the wave of, of death threats against Anita Hill after her 91 testimony and about how Christine Blasey Ford has had to move multiple times, four times, in fact, and how the safety of their families never seemed to be a top concern for civility enthusiasts. So, I don't know, until Kavanaugh has to move four times, maybe don't be up in arms about this if you're on the right, if you didn't care at all about what was happening to Christine Blasey Ford. From uh, Sarah Beth Rosenberg here, if someone thinks it's an invasion of privacy to protest outside someone's house, imagine having a bunch of religious zealots on the Supreme Court and GOP majority legislatures invade your privacy and strip you of your bodily autonomy and force you to have a baby against your will. I mean, how can you argue against this? But people will try. Last opinion here from Kang. We just saw the accumulation of 50 years of unpopular and fringe organizing and protest. It is truly bizarre that the response from so many who say they're on the side of abortion rights is to play hall monitor and blow the whistle on actions they think will be unpopular. There you go. I'm not sure what else there is to uh, say here. Look, I understand this is still, this can still be a divisive issue. You still may be against it. But if, to me, the biggest point out of all of these, the most important point was from Rob Rousseau. I'm going to read it again. Who said, if you don't want anyone protesting outside your house, simply do not spend your entire life accumulating political power in order to take fundamental rights away from millions of people. That's it. If you're in an incredible position of power, as a Supreme Court justice is, and what you are doing right now is stripping the rights away from millions, yeah, there's going to be some blowback. If you think you can do that and (laughs) no one's going to be bothered, like, are you crazy? Of course, that's going to cause disruption. So if you don't want people outside your house protesting, don't spend your entire life to accumulate an incredible political power to take rights away from others.